So now we're going to switch from my little point class, which is just two doubles, to an actual string class. So what's interesting about the Python string class is that you can extend it. And so we've been talking a lot about pointers and arrays, and even when you call malloc, you can't just keep extending things. Whereas in Python, thankfully, we can just extend things. We create a string, we can append a h to it, and we can print it, append hello world and print it, and then assign it to some other string, and then print that and get, up the, get its length. And we never had to allocate or deallocate any memory during this time. When you get done looking at the code, what we're going to have to do to allocate and deallocate memory, what you should be thinking is, wow, I'm glad I'm programming in Python. I'm glad that Guido Van Rossum gave me a string class rather than a character array of fixed length, an expandable string class rather than a character array of fixed length. So we are going to create in C, using our little convention of naming, a string class. And so if we look at the code, what we're going to try to do here is we're going to basically emulate the Python syntax, but in C. So we're going to start by making a structure, pyster structure. We're going to get a pointer back. We're going to name that X. And we're going to call the constructor pyster new. We're going to dump it. We're going to have a little dumper. We're going to append an H to it. We're going to dump it again. Then we're going to append a whole string. Now H in C is a character and LO world is a multi-character string. And so we're appending many characters. We're going to dump that. Then we're going to assign it to a completely new string. And then we're going to print it out. Like pi, give me the string version of this object or the length of it. And then we're going to delete it, and throw it away. So you can see all of the Python operations are sort of mimicked, but with naming conventions in C. Now, the one thing you'll notice here is in this main code, we never allocated any memory and we never deallocated any, any memory. That is within the object. Now, within the object, we have a responsibility to properly allocate and deallocate. But one of the interesting things here is, is I haven't shown you the code to do any of that. And so you don't know that. But that's cool because we can use this as long as we do a new, play with it, and then do a del, we can do stuff with it. It Underneath Pyster, it does all of that memory management for us. And that's one of the beautiful things about an object-oriented approach. Again, the syntax on the one side in C is pretty heavy, but in the syntax on the on the other side, which is the uh, the Python, is pretty light. But the idea is is that in Python we never had to worry about over making a string too long or too short or having buffer overrun or anything like that. So as we dive in, we have to realize that part of the job of this pyster object is to handle all memory allocation on our behalf so we as programmers can write much simpler code. Okay, so now we are going to build the pyster class. We're going to create a structure called pyster and in that we're going to have three things. The length of the string, we have how much data we've got allocated in the string, and then char data is the actual character array. And so we have to have a character array inside of it we're not, we're not going to let the outside code touch this character array directly. We're going to completely manage it inside this object. We got draw a little bubble around us and it's like, you can do stuff, you can use my object, but I'm going to deal with everything for you. So don't mess around with my internal stuff. So what we would think of is all of this instruct pyster is sort of private. In C, we don't have a good way to force it to be private. Um, but in the concept of object orientation, length, alloc, and data, would be something we'd think of as private. In our constructor, we are being asked to create a new Python string, and we're going to return a pointer to that structure when it's done. So the first thing we do is we alloc, alloc it. Now int, int is usually a 32 bits, so that's four, uh, alloc, there's four, eight, there's probably 16 characters in pyster. Um, when we do malloc, size of p is 16. That's the number 16. And so it's going to give me 16 characters. Now, the, the key thing is, is that that is not allocating the actual string data. It just allocated eight bytes for a pointer to the string. Star data is a pointer. And that first malloc is only giving us the pointer, not the actual data. So then we just sort of set it up. We say our length of the string is zero. There's nothing in it. 
our allocated length of the underlying data string is 10, and then we immediately call malloc to get 10 characters. So now data is a 10 character, character array, and alloc tells us how much we've allocated, because it's our job inside this thing to keep track of that stuff. And then just to be good, we throw backslash zero uh, at the zero position in that allocated character. We don't know what the rest of them are, we just know that the first one is zero. And then we return the pointer to the structure, not the pointer to the data, the pointer to the structure. And this gets called inside the main as struct pyster star x equals pyster new. And when we're done, we get back this cool little two pieces of data that have been dynamically allocated and it's all, it's all ready for us to do cool stuff with. We got the struct, we've got the constructor, and then we've got the destructor, which is pyster del. And that again passes in self. Now we're calling free. Now if you recall, there are two allocated things. One is the data, which is the character array that we've got. We've got to get rid of that. And then we've got to get rid of the object itself. And so at the end of del, we have given back all of the data that we've alloced. Now one thing important here is the order of these two statements matters a lot. So when we free self, we're not supposed to access self anymore after that point. I'm, I'm sure there could be some data just laying in there that's not been ruined, but you just don't know. And so that's why we have to free self arrow data before we free self, just because it's just wrong to do that in the other order. And so we do a pyster dump, and in that we dump out the length, we dump out how much we've allocated so far, and what the data is in it so far. And then pyster len, pyster len returns an integer and it takes self as a parameter. The key to this is it returns self length. And you might ask why it is that we don't just let our calling code access self length. And this again is encapsulation. We don't want to reveal the fact that we're keeping track of length in this variable because we don't want the calling code to be messing with it. Remember that length, data, and alloc are kind of private. And so instead of saying, just go look at self length. No, I would like you to call my function and I will give you the thing you want. So you just call the len function to pass in the instance and that allows me to change the name of length. It allows me to interpret length differently. It allows me to do all kinds of things, but at least the object writer is in control of the contract with the outside world. So by hiding all the data and giving methods to act, act we call these accessors, to access this data is a good idea. Now the underscore stir, if you think of Python, it's like you can say stir, open paren, close paren, anything inside the parentheses and it converts it to a string. Well, it just so happens that we're going to maintain self.data as a valid string. So when you say take this string object and convert it to a string ready for printing, I'm just gonna return the pointer to the string we've been maintaining all along internally. We have some other methods that we've gotta add. We've gotta add an append to add a single character. You can see that it's got two parameters. It's got self and a single character ch. You got append s, which is a, got two parameters, the self, the instance, and a whole character string, which is a pointer to a character. Then we have a sign, which is, uh, got two parameters, one is self, and one is a pointer to a character string. Now, I'm not gonna give you these lines of code. I'm gonna give you an assignment to write these lines of code. I'm gonna show you how they're supposed to work, but I'm not gonna give you the code. So I'm telling you that pyster append is about 10 lines of code. Pyster append s is just one line of code, it's a for loop. Pyster assign is about three lines of code. So pyster append s calls pyster append, and pyster assign calls pyster append s. And so we do a lot of reuse here. So let's take a look at how these are going to be used in our main program. We say struct pyster star x equals pyster new, which is that, give me a new string object. And then we're going to append a single character h to it. And then we're gonna append s, a multi-character string. And we're gonna dump it each time. And then we're going to overwrite our object with a completely new string. And so the key thing is you have got to build this. This is what you're going to build, okay? But I'm gonna talk a little bit about how to do it. So. Let's walk through what you might need to do in pyster append. Now recall that when we set this thing up, we created length, we allocated 10 characters and a 10 character array and had data point to that 10 character array, and we remembered that we had 10 characters. So the first thing that append does is it checks if the, the, the length is greater than what we've allocated, meaning that 
you know, if we're going to put in character zero, like the letter H, we can just append it and then update length. We still have 10 characters allocated and we've used one of them. Um, and so we can just start appending into data, right? And we have to put a uh, zero at the after it so that the data is a valid string all the time. And so if you kind of imagine that we create the new object, we have a, a new object that has a length of zero and it has 10 character array and it has a, a string end character in the first character, we're good and we have 10 allocated and we know we have 10 allocated. Then if we add an H character, a single character H, all we have to do is add H into that array, data sub zero in that case, and then update length to be one and then say data sub one is backslash zero so that we terminate it correctly. So after that first line, the data is H, it's a valid H string. So we've appended a single character, we've updated the length, and then we have terminated the string. And then we go to the next line in C where we're just, in this case, we're going to append the letter E. And we look at the length of, the, of it because it tells us where to put it. The length is one, so we put it in sub one and add backslash zero. And then we check to make sure that we have space for it because we've got 10, but we've only used two. We really use three because H, E, end of character string. So we really use three, but the length of the string we've got is three. So as long as no one asks us to append more than 10 characters, append is a pretty simple operation. You just add to the, the character array that we've already got allocated, okay? But of course, it gets interesting. You can append H-E-L-L-O space W-O-R, and at that point we have uh, nine characters in our length of the string that's in data is nine. We've got it properly terminated. So we have used the 10th character to terminate the string. So we're really good. Things are great. But now the problem is we have got to append the L after the R. So we have to append the L after the R. So what we have to do is we have to call a function. We called malloc in the constructor. And now in append, we're going to have to call realloc to say, ooh, I asked for 10 characters, but now I want to extend that from 10 to 20 characters. And Realloc does that. Realloc says, here's a pointer, and it knows how many characters it is. Please reallocate this pointer, take this date in this pointer, and give me, make it 20 long instead of 10 long. It might have to copy it. So let's take a look at what Realloc does. So we can extend the size of a dynamically allocated area by calling realloc with the current pointer to the area and the new size. So in the constructor, you see that we malloc 10, and then we're in the append, and we say if the length is greater than self alloc minus two, we don't have space for two characters left, then we're gonna have to realloc. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna change this from 10 to 20 characters. So we're gonna take self alloc, which is 10 and add 10 to it. So now self alloc is 20. And then we're going to set self data to, a, to realloc the old self data, 20 characters. So this, this realloc takes a pointer and a new size and gives us back a new pointer. Now it actually may have to move it in memory. So you can't assume that self data is the same before and after, but you can assume that if it had to move the data to find you a 20 character slot in its free space, that it will have copied all the first 10 characters will be copied and then you'll get a new parameter. And that's why you see self data on both sides, both in the call to realloc and as the assignment statement. So we go back here and we can see that, oh yeah, now we have 20 and it's got plenty of space for the L and the D and the backslash zero. So now we're going to show the code that's going to basically test our class. We're going to create a new, we're going to dump it, we're going to append a single character H, we're going to dump it, we're going to append a string. One way to make this simple is just have append S, call append repeatedly for nine characters because appending nine character string is the same as appending nine characters, not uh, appending one character at a time nine times. Then assign assigning a completely new string, which means that it, you got a, 
you got to take length back and you got to set some things and you got to check the size and do a whole bunch of stuff. And then we're going to ask the pyster underscore stir to give us back a printable string. And then we're going to ask the pyster underscore lengness len to tell us how long this thing is. And so you get to write some code. Not too much code, probably 15 lines of code. Um, but it is code that you will need to think deeply about and you're going to need to understand the structures, you're going to need to understand the pointers, etc, etc, etc. Up next, we are going to make a list class.